ever wonder about the cultural do's and don'ts of a place as mystifying as Tibet? Well, you're not alone. Tibet, a land known for its breathtaking landscapes, deep spiritual traditions, and rich cultural heritage, also harbors an array of intriguing taboos. These cultural norms, deeply rooted in Tibetan ethos, offer a fascinating glimpse into the lives and beliefs of the Tibetan people. Tibetan taboos are not just restrictions or prohibitions, they're more like unspoken rules, respected and followed by locals, shaping their behavior and interactions. These taboos to outsiders may appear strange or even unbelievable, but they are integral to the Tibetan way of life, reflecting their deep respect for nature, spirituality, and each other. From how to sit, eat, or greet, to more profound aspects like spirituality and death, these taboos cover a wide spectrum of life in Tibet. So buckle up and get ready to dive deep into the world of Tibetan taboos and strange facts that you won't believe exist. Kickstarting our countdown, let's delve into some of the most surprising taboos in Tibet. First on our list is the act of accepting a gift. In many parts of the world, it's considered polite to accept a gift with both hands, but in Tibet, it's a different story. Here, it's essential to use only your right hand when receiving a gift. Using both hands is seen as a sign of greed and is highly frowned upon. It's a subtle gesture, yet it carries significant cultural weight highlighting the Tibetan emphasis on moderation and humility. Next, we move on to the art of whistling. While often associated with joy and carefree spirits, whistling indoors is strictly taboo in Tibet. The reason for this? It's believed to attract negative spirits and bring bad luck. So if you ever find yourself in a Tibetan home, remember to keep the whistling for the great outdoors. Our third taboo involves thresholds. In Tibetan culture, stepping on the threshold of a door is seen as a sign of disrespect. This is because thresholds are considered sacred, serving as a boundary between the spiritual and physical world. So, when you enter a Tibetan home, be sure to step over, not on, the threshold. Fourthly, we dive into the world of table manners. In Tibet, it's considered rude to stick your tongue out at someone. However, this rule has an interesting exception. During meals, it's actually encouraged to stick out your tongue as a sign of enjoyment and appreciation for the food, an unusual dining etiquette but one that's deeply rooted in Tibetan tradition. Lastly, for this part of our countdown, is the act of clapping. In many cultures, clapping is a sign of applause or appreciation, but in Tibet, clapping is considered impolite and even offensive. Instead, Tibetans show their appreciation through gentle head nods and warm smiles. These cultural norms, while unusual to us, form a crucial part of Tibetan life. As we move forward with our countdown, the taboos get even more interesting. In the heart of the Himalayas, the Tibetan culture holds a treasure trove of intriguing taboos. Our next taboo is one that might surprise you. It's about the head. In Tibetan culture, the head is considered sacred. Touching someone's head, even in a friendly or affectionate manner, is seen as a sign of disrespect. Moving on, we come across a taboo that revolves around the art of conversation. In Tibetan society, clapping your hands while talking is considered rude. It's akin to shouting in someone's ear. Now, let's talk about feet. In many cultures, feet are just feet. But in Tibet, there's so much more. Feet are considered the lowest part of the body, both physically and symbolically. Gesturing with your feet, therefore, is seen as an insult. Our next taboo is a fascinating one. It involves the act of spitting. In Tibetan culture, spitting in public is seen as highly disrespectful. It's a gross violation of social norms. Lastly, we come to the taboo of pointing with a single finger. In Tibetan culture, pointing with one finger is considered rude and offensive. Instead, they use the entire hand to gesture towards something or someone. These practices might seem strange to us, but they hold significant meaning in Tibetan culture. As we come to the end of our countdown, Prepare to be astonished by these final taboos. Let's delve into the 11th taboo, spitting in public. This is considered highly disrespectful in Tibetan society. It's not just a matter of cleanliness, but a reflection of one's inner discipline and respect for others. So, if you ever find yourself in Tibet, remember, no spitting. Moving on to the 12th taboo, turning prayer wheels counterclockly. In Tibetan Buddhism, prayer wheels filled with sacred mantras are believed to spread spiritual blessings when spun. However, they should always be turned clockwise, following the direction of the sun.
turning them counterclockwise is a big no-no, as it's believed to reverse the flow of good karma. Now, onto the 13th taboo, it's about eating fish. You might find this surprising considering Tibet's vast water bodies, but eating fish is often frowned upon. The reason? Tibetans believe that fish are the carriers of the souls of the deceased and consuming them would be akin to disturbing the peace of the departed. The final two taboos are equally fascinating. They revolve around respecting the personal space of monks and not pointing the soles of your feet towards religious artifacts. Both are deemed disrespectful and are strictly avoided by the locals. These taboos provide a fascinating insight into the rich and diverse culture of Tibet. Intrigued by the Tibetan taboos we've just explored, we've delved into fascinating aspects from the unique dietary customs to the surprising social norms. We've learned about the profound respect for life seen in the taboo against killing insects and the deep spiritual practices, like the unconventional sky burials. These taboos, while seemingly strange to outsiders, are deeply ingrained in Tibetan culture and are respected by its people. Remember, understanding and respecting these cultural norms is a key part of truly experiencing Tibet. So next time you plan a trip, keep the